All right, welcome back, guys. We are doing another pinning three different YouTubers against each other. Well, not them, but their recipes. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Candice the Veg, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. On today's YouTuber face-off, I am testing waffle recipes. A lot of you guys requested breakfast foods and some of you requested waffles and I love waffles. So I thought, why not? This could be so much fun. I love breakfast food. So I have three different people that we are, well, technically four because one of them is two people. The YouTubers whose recipes we're testing today are Rachel Emma, Bosch TV, and The Chic Natural, AKA, Kit. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. We love Skillshare here. They're an awesome online learning community. They have thousands of awesome courses that you can take to get your creativity flowing. You know, learn something new. A little bit more on that in a little bit, but thank you so much to Skillshare for always sponsoring the Edgy Veg. All of these waffle recipes are a little bit different. Rachel's is gluten-free. Bosch TV is like a very decadent version. They call them banoffles. So it's kind of like a banoffee pie, but inspired into a waffle situation. Kim's is like the easiest waffle recipe ever. Honestly, I feel like I would take that route on a weekend. And she is serving up chicken and waffles. All right, so let's get started with the first recipe. All right, so this first recipe from Bosch TV is the banoff, banoffee, banoffles, banoffles. So it is, we have some chocolate, banana, and some caramel. Pretty simple recipe. Everything's kind of done in a blender. And then they give you a great recipe, super easy recipe to make vegan caramel while you are doing the rest of this. I mean, it seems pretty standard to me. We've got our flour, water, sugar. Let's do it. So we've got some almond milk. We have our flour. What's really fun is that in their recipe, they call it a liquefier. We had to watch the video to figure out what that was. I'd never heard a blender called the liquefier before, so that was a fun one for me today. Is that common? Let me know in the comment section down below if that's like just a common UK way to say blender. Baking powder, vanilla, caster sugar, orange juice, and some salt. All right, and then just blend that. All right, so it's nice and creamy, like the recipe says, and then it says pour into a jug. I already have it in a jug because I use my Vitamix. And then pour a mixture onto a hot, lightly oiled waffle iron and cook for four to six minutes. My waffle iron is non-stick, so I'm not gonna oil it. I mean, we could do maybe one oiled and one not oiled. It doesn't exactly say how much, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. One that. There we go. All right, so this recipe is topped with banana slices and dark chocolate. I have chocolate chips here, so I'm just gonna chop them up and slice the bananas while I'm waiting for that to cook up. All right, so it's been about five minutes and it looks like this, which I think is pretty much done. All right, so we've got one. All right, so let's decorate our banoffles. And then I'm going to go caramel and then chocolate, but I think you can do that in whatever order you want. Oh yeah, there we go. Breakfast of champions. I'd say that's a well-balanced breakfast. You know, you got, you got your carb, your superfood, which is the chocolate. Sugar is important. Oh, uh, well this caramel is made with maple and maple has minerals. So there you go, it's well balanced. Don't come for me. All right, the second waffles that we are going to make are from Rachel Ama. They are gluten-free waffles. She says gluten-free waffles for all waffle lovers. Well, I am a waffle lover. So this one is made with oat flour, plant-based milk, and then we have salt, a banana, apple cider vinegar, and flax seeds. The banana, I assume, is for flavoring. So again, we're gonna have like a banana flavored waffle, flax seed to bind it together. I mean, this recipe, everything in here makes sense to me. So let's go ahead. Oh, they're buttermilk waffles. I just read ahead. So we are going to turn the milk into buttermilk. So they're like a banana, gluten, a gluten-free banana buttermilk waffle. All right, so we're making our flax egg. Mix that together, let it sit for like five to 10. I have the uh, vinegar here to make the buttermilk. Mix that around. It should curdle up a little bit. While those are sitting, I'm just going to mash up this banana. It's a whole banana. I would have liked this banana to be a little bit riper, but all the bananas in the house are exactly the same. I'm trying to get it really nice and smooth. It doesn't say whether 
it's banana waffle specifically, so I don't know if there's supposed to be chunks of banana, but it just says mash, so I assume like a, a really consistent mash is what Rachel's going for here. All right, so it's been a few minutes. I've let both the buttermilk and the flax eggs sit, so now I'm just gonna add all of the ingredients in one bowl, and then we'll make waffles. All right, we've got our flax egg, baking soda, our oat flour, and the buttermilk. All right, so she says mix them together, but don't over mix them. So I'm just gonna mix them until they're smooth. To be honest, I don't really use a lot of oat flour. It's not really my go-to flour. I mean, I'm not gluten-free or anything, so I don't really have to worry about it. But if I do choose to use like a gluten-free flour, it's usually a one-to-one. -one. All right, so that's mixed together without being over mixed. And then she says add it to the waffle iron. If the mixture is too thick, add a bit more plant-based milk. If it's too runny, add more oat flour. But I think this is kind of perfect. I think that's about the consistency that we would want. It doesn't say whether or not to grease the waffle maker or anything, but I feel like her food is a bit on the healthier side, so I assume that she's not greasing it. It also doesn't say how much to add to the waffle maker. I've noticed that with both of them now, they don't give amounts of how many. So she doesn't mention how long these have to cook for. It does say at the beginning of the recipe, prep time five minutes, cook time five minutes. If you are making two big waffles, then that would be two and a half minutes per waffle. If you're making three, then so I'm thinking maybe the five minutes cook time here. There was a lot of condensation coming off of it. So I'm a little concerned that it's going to, like when I lift up the lid, it's gonna get stuck because I didn't grease it, but. Still very soft on the inside. So it's been cooking for five minutes. And maybe it's just, it looks soft on the inside, but maybe that's just, it's like dense, which is fine. But she said it makes two large waffles or three small. So I'm gonna go for the two large. I mean, when I first saw the photo, on her website, I thought they were chocolate waffles because they were quite dark. While we are waiting for these waffles to cook, I figured I'd talk to you about our sponsor, Skillshare. So Skillshare is a awesome community online of people that want to learn. They have amazing thousands of classes that you can take ranging from learning how to take care of your plants to learning how to do accounting for your business to interior design. And one class that I have been loving lately is Style your space, creative tips and techniques for interior design. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I am an avid collector of antiques and just quirky things and I hate buying things new. I like buying things used and off of the internet or on the side of the road. That's how I like to furnish my home. So I've been loving this class. The teacher is Emily Henderson. She's a stylist, author, and host. The classes in her course include what is styling, how to find your style, sticking to a color palette, something I definitely need help with because I tend to be that kind of like French boho style where you pick every color of the rainbow and shove it into a room. So that was very helpful. Definitely check out the link in the description box down below. Skillshare is offering the first a thousand edgy veg followers to click that link they get a free premium membership and then after that it's about ten dollars a month so definitely check it out it's been about it was a little bit thicker than the other one so it's been about six minutes almost seven and it still looks a little bit raw but again i don't know if it's just supposed to be really soft on the inside but the outside is nice and crispy so we're gonna go ahead and take that off i am worried that i'm going to burn it if i leave it on here any longer i'm actually gonna put this one on the bottom because it's bigger there we go so those are the waffles and she says that she likes to top it with chocolate and hazelnut and I have a chocolate hazelnut spread, so that's perfect. And I got some berries, because I think this one would taste really good with chocolate and some berries. All right, the third recipe is from The Chic Natural, Kimberly, and it was, I found this recipe in one of her What I Eat In A Days, and I love how basic and simple this is. It is made with Bisquick. I always have this on hand, just because it's nice and simple and easy to use on the weekend when you don't wanna make everything from scratch. So she pretty much uh, just follows the instructions that are on the box and just leaves out the eggs, and that's it. And she likes to 
do it with like chicken and waffles. Now in her video, she uses mushrooms to make the chicken. I just happen to have some fried chicken on hand from another video we did a couple days ago. So I'm going to use that instead of the, the mushrooms like she did, but we're going to do everything else the same and we're gonna get the same outcome. All right, first thing I'm going to do is add some plant-based milk. The video is actually called Lit Brunch Ideas. It's not a what I eat in a day. I misspoke there, but I've seen her recipe for waffles a couple times on her channel. Adding the Bisquick and then adding the oil and that's it. It's pretty much like using any other kind of pancake waffle batter. But it's so nice and simple, especially if you're going to go out of your way to make a vegan chicken from scratch. Throw them on the waffle iron. Although for waffles, the box says to cook it for five minutes. So again, I'm going to do like about a cup's worth. We'll come back in five. All right, so this one's done. I think they all have two except for the first one, which made enough for three waffles. All right, so this, I just, ha it's its me. So I halved the uh, Bisquick recipe. So this one made two waffles, which is the perfect size. And then I just heated up my fried chicken. Uh, this is my seitan recipe. So it's just breaded and you can find the recipe for that on my website. But the way that she does this in the video is she puts the chicken on top, then she adds the powdered sugar over everything. And then the maple syrup over that. All right, and then she says that she likes to eat the chicken with a side of hot sauce. So I have some Valentina here and voila, that is the third one. All right, so we have a little bit of each one on our plate here. I'm going to start with um, Rachel Amma's. All I taste is berry, hold on. It's a little bit dry. Yeah, I'm I feeling think. the same thing. It's a little bit dry. Because it's no butter or oil mm -hmm. or anything, right? The flavor's not bad. I think it could be a little bit sweeter. Because I don't think she's going for a savory waffle if it's banana. The texture is a lot better than I thought it was going to be based on like not knowing how to cook it. I think it could be a little bit sweeter and then yeah, it's a good gluten-free option. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It looks nice too. It's definitely not the worst gluten-free waffle I've had by far. I would just make it a little bit sweeter. I'm really happy with that. I think it's like an easy way to make a vegan like brunch alternative. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't tried it with the hot sauce and then them together yet either. I mean, I love sweet and savory mm -hmm. together. Yeah, so good. Probably should have done the hot sauce last because now my mouth tastes like that. Banoffles. Oh, these are hard to cut. Mm hmm. The waffles are quite good. They are hard to cut though, so if you're not serving them right away, they can get a little stale, is the wrong word that I'm looking for, but you stiff. know what I mean? Stiff. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they're good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would next time, I would listen to what they said and I think I would grease the pan. Cause I think this with a little bit of that like oil to fry it a little bit would be really good. Mm -hmm. I definitely love the combination of bananas and mm -hmm. caramel sauce though. All right, how do we pick our favorite? They're all so different. But we did it on purpose because we wanted the personality of the person that we're testing to come through on each waffle. I don't know. I mean, chicken and waffles is a go-to for me. I definitely like savory breakfasts more than sweet breakfasts, and that is both. I think the banoffee one, banoffles, is that what they're calling it? Banoffles. I think it gives me like, like brunch, like restaurant vibe. Yeah. More than the other two. The other two are like super like good for homemade. Mm -hmm. I think I would have this, like this is a great healthy alternative that is still tasty. I would just make it a little bit sweeter. If you are adverse to sugar, you can easily do that with like maple syrup or agave or something. Yeah, and it would be good to have like as a weekday breakfast instead yeah. of something more rich like those. Right. All right, so who's the winner for you? I think Bosch TV is the winner. Yeah? yeah. I think Kim is the winner for me just cause chicken and waffles has a place in my heart. This is a fun episode. This was so much fun.